<laughs> they come to me now. Yeah, exactly. All right, here, here's another thing that I don't see it. This picture was probably 12 years ago. We used to feed with the high top, with a can, a can jar. And we have students working the hive, so when you fill these jars up, they get slippery. And you see my brick system? Bricks. They're on the ground, so it slips out. We have broken glass. These half gallon jars, I think that's a half gallon we were using. Uh, the quartz was about $8 at the time. So we went to a high top feeder, the early style. And from the early style to the present, this is, that's the last. That's four months ago. But now, what do you see wrong with that high? What's wrong with it, Nikki? I see burr comb on it. It's too much honey in there. Yeah. For, for what? For doing the nukes? Oh, what's wrong with that hive? Right there. Look at it. Look at this. That's telling you what's wrong with that hive. There's too much space in between the space. Space. It's full of that crap. That sticky stuff. Mm. Look at honey. it. How much money do you make on this? Come on, honey, yeah. yeah. All right, you notice how deep my frame rest is? And you see that this, and you've got three eighths above it. Even if I cut that box down. <clears throat> this, I was explaining to Paul. This here, we've taken frames, honey. There was eight eight frames here. We was making eight splits that day on that one hive, and we'll come back probably in ten days and make some more splits. Don't say you can't do it, and don't say you won't make honey because it'll get in your way. I experience it constantly here, and you see he's not got a bee suit on. He wore a bee suit before. I don't wear. I don't own a bee suit. All right, do the next one. See, look at the bees. The picture, I don't know if you've seen it, where i am got my chin on a high, and the bees are coming up. You know how that picture actually comes to play? I have people coming all over. I teach professors and that. I had two people from UGA come over, and we was working nukes. And you know what they said? You can work those bee hives because there's no bees in them. Well, a couple of my students, big greens, let's go in the back. And they pulled two supers off, and the bees come rolling out. I stuck my chin up there. I said, is this got enough bees? That's where that picture comes from. <laughs> uh, and they went back up and got the bee suit. Uh, yeah. The reason we don't have a lot of bees in our front hives, this here is about eight or ten splits right there. So you either make honey or you make bees. One or two. All right, do the next. You can see different positions. The bees are gentle. Buy good bees, and you you good. She must have spotted the queen on there or something. And no matter if you come up my house or not, now see, here's a medium. You see what's in here? Mm -hmm. Drums. Hmm? Drums. Mm -hmm. Drones and what? Honey. 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 You see that short one? See that short one there? Yeah. Uh, you don't think there's an egg in there? Mm -hmm. I didn't feel that. That's a medium frame. You know what that is? That's another split engine. Oh, okay. Okay. Right? Yeah. I have a different way of looking at things. Okay. All right, do the next one. <laughs> <laughs> now, you see this? We didn't have no mice in there. What do you think that is? It's where you cut out. Cut out. Uh, it looks like we've done a minimum. In fact, there's still one here. We've probably got three there, probably five or six here. She's probably pointing to one more. Oh, okay. One frame can have a minimum of five to ten. I've seen as many as 15, 20 cells on a frame. Mm -hmm. So if you've got eight frames in there, if you pull the four out of the middle, ten times that, that's 40. Mm -hmm. And you want to make bees, why do you want to graft? The bees see better than we can. Yeah. It takes years to get that larva up without rolling it or mm -hmm. bumping it and banging it and everything else. So grafting's good. If you want to graft, I'll teach you. Mm -hmm. All right, do the next. Now, when you say cells, you're talking about queen cells. I let the bees do all the work. I'm lazy. Why do I want to sit in that hot room back there? It needs to be 92 degrees if you want to uh, rep. You drop down to 85, you're going to run a chance of drying out and, and getting chill root. And if you want to grab a standard, a standard bar we use, we have three bars on here. And each bar we try to run 14, 15 cells on. You don't need to graft. I mean, the average person in here, I'll bet you I can show you in just a minute. Take a frame just like this. Take a utility knife, cut a two-inch strip just like this. Stand it up, push it, 
Just go along and push it just like this. Push, push, space them out about an inch apart. At the very least, you'll get five queens on there. And the average person can't use more than about ten queens at a time. I done I done a video on that because I was in the back wrapping and showing two students. Two guys come down. I didn't know they was coming. They was old guys, and they said, "Well, that's fine. You can see. Uh, we can't see. Uh, it's hard for us to see that." I have a magnifying glass and everything back there for them to do. And I said, "Look, how many queens you want?" They want a half a dozen. I showed them. Why didn't somebody else show me that? They said. I'm doing stuff, half the stuff I forgot. I just done a video on uh, queen, uh, not queen, uh, swarm boxes. You walk up, you hang the box like this. Walk up, one sec, you hang the box. It's called a French cleat. Mm -hmm. And people says, what? I forgot about it years ago, because I don't set boxes up. You know what a French cleat is? Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a bar. It's, it's actually a rabbit on one side and a 45 on another one. And you hang it. You got your box you want to change, the box here. You reach up, take that off, set that one on there, walk away. Less than 30 seconds, you change boxes. Climbing up to you. You can face a swarm box any way you want. All right. You know what this is? Here. Okay, you see that girl that was working shorts? She can work that high real good. But if this thing gets up underneath the high, what do you think is going to happen? It's going to get her stung because they're going to get more defensive. And the next thing is your skunks, you know, your possums. If you don't want to save the wax, have a habit of some container and just throw your wax in. Uh, I work with students that they come and they have bad habits. They scrape off the wax and they pitch it. Once you start getting skunks, possums, raccoons coming to your yard, they know it's free dinner. Uh -huh. So they're going to keep coming back. And the only way we found to stop them is on the bottom board, take an air gun and shoot up brads, so like make a duck or a triple row. And when their paw comes up and they rip it open once or twice, they usually won't come back. Usually. But this is, uh, that's a brown lizard. We got uh, purple tail ones. And we got those uh, little green ones with the red throat. And you know what this is? Carpet. Carpet. When grass comes through, we change carpet on the house, and the guy would go charge and haul away. What? Cut it in strips and put it behind the beehive? Yeah. Weed blocker. I'm a cheap guy. Weed blocker. Yeah. Uh, get get the connection. All right. You know what this stuff is? Weed clover, plantain. Plantain. You see the fried ridges? It has a this ain't plantain here. That's clover. Plantain. People that grew up around here, they used to turn this and pop them. Yeah. If you get a bee sting. Take this, get it spit on it, get it juicy, and put it on your. Mm -hmm. It pulls the poison out and it won't swell. Mm -hmm. If you're gray, the heads come off of here, it's a little short. The bees work, it's got flowers. You chew it up and swallow. Flush it down, beat, and uh, these kitties won't bite you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we got a wide variety of things in here. <laughs> All right, what you see now? Captain. Captain. Mm -hmm. Okay. Starting with queen cell there. Yeah, and the queen. You notice anything special about that frame? You probably notice it more than I do. Not a bad frame as far as is brood, right? You know what's missing? Funny. Well. The, it, this is what I was talking about, a good pattern. See how high that pattern is? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't need that, honey. But you know what's the main thing that's missing here? Unless you are a queen breeder, you don't notice it. How many drones you see? Mm -hmm. Bring a half a dozen drones. Mm -hmm. They all went to happy hunting grounds. The winter time? The winter time? Winter time. Yeah. Mating. I make queens. Oh, the real happy honey. The real happy honey. So they swarm? They swarm? No, uh, they no swarm? No matter if this is a good established hive, if there's drones in there, they can hear the queen 
fly out. And then they, they chase the pheromones and stuff. And I'm not making stories up, but I probably two or three of my students will verify. I could be walking through my bee yard and I look up and there's a swarm there. Now, how do you know? Or there's a box they're going to go in. You can hear them. Mm -hmm. You've seen it there. Uh, let's do the next one. Oh, look at the catching the queen, looks like. See that? This is where we cut cells out. And for two frames, three frames in my boxes, that ain't a bad pattern. Now, uh, James and Steve and Nikki been to my place, and you're only going to find stuff like that on plate and when we're getting ready to sell nukes. We want at least three good frames like that in a hive. And what we do, you come buy a nuke from me, or James, probably Nikki, they, they all do the same. I'm going to point the queen out. And I'm going to show you the pattern, the color of the bees. If you don't like it, you're not going to make me mad. I'll get you a different box. You hit the street, they're yours. Don't bring them back. Mm -hmm. Because people will get a nuke from me or anybody else. They got tinkeritis. You know what tinkeritis is? They get in there, they just got to play with them. Mm -hmm. They don't have enough bees to keep them occupied. I right, do the next one. Why do you. Why do you uh... Some beekeepers clip wings on the queens. The clipping bees, you see all the bees here. Clipping queens serves no purpose. Marking has got very limited purpose. It's my views against everybody else's. When you clip a queen, it does not stop her from swarming. They got the swarm state. There's something not right in the hive. It could be something simple, overcrowding. It could be honey bun. They're going to leave. They come out and they probably crawl up. You could have, you could save the queen, but whenever you clip a queen, you run high risk of them replacing her. They're just like people. Got a guy that's hobbling around, and you got a young guy. Which one are you going to hire to do your laundry? You know? <laughs> they, they get the perception there's something wrong with that queen, and they're going to replace it. And unless you get good at marking queens, there's no purpose to that. It doesn't really serve a purpose unless you live in an area where you have known Africanized bees. If you want to keep up with it, get a th colored thumbtack. If the, this year is blue, marking for international marking, put a blue thumbtack. If you're going to mark queens, I used to charge five. I, I mark your queen if you want it. I'm going to explain to you the good and bad. I'm going to charge you $10. By the time I mark that queen, I could catch 25 more. Well, what I do, I teach students to do If this is the blue year, you're going to catch this right, this queen here out of the box. Put her in the cage. When you're, well, before you put her in the cage, you hold her in your hand and put the dot on, and then, or you do it in reverse. You blot, blot the frame first. So you take the excess off. Then you mark the queen, put her in the cage. And the reason you do that is you take the excess paint off. And that also tells you how old that frame is by the year. And then, there, there are different ways you can uh, keep up with stuff. We're going to the back, and you see, I'm open feeding with honey. I've just opened buckets of honey up to get rid of it. And you see, bare legs? I mean, people tell you a lot of different things. That's, that's my bee lab. This way out in the back. See, we run a front yard, which is customer yard, and learning, and then we try to keep our good stuff in the back. And now we're slowly getting smarter. We're getting away from there because my son says if it's in the yard, it's sold. Who was that? The dog days of summer, and you're just propping the lids up or something? Yeah. No, that's this is beehives under here. I just you cut the wood. wood. No. In the back. Oh, in the background? Yeah. They have the dog up. can. And, uh, oh no, we we dumped honey in there, and I was trying to get rid of it fast. Hmm. <laughs> we we feed. In bird baths, buckets, I feed more. And it, it's just like you don't see robin in my place. And I have people, oh, my bees are robbing one another because you feed them Kool Aid. Kool Aid. They need sugar. They don't need water to build. So when you open a can of peaches and you pour it, you want it that thick or thicker. All right, do the next one. See where we mark them all the way around the yard. That's the, what you see under the thing. 
make our own beef. We do everything. My son is, he's more faster than I am, and he don't like doing this because you've got to plane it. He just went down and bought 2,000 feet of, of uh, 1 by 12, kill dry wood. I'm just old school. I ain't worried about hurrying up. Uh, the next one. But we try to teach you to be self-sufficient. Uh, get the next one. That's just there's there's my storage shed, storage of boxes. Even if well, you see this has been painted and that's not painted. We get our box together. We make money. It goes to the woods. It goes to the yard. We make the money. If it gets paint, wonderful. This went out and it never got painted. When it come back, it was painted. And then it went out again and we found it needed handles, so it went into power neck handles. But even if you've got boxes that's busted out, I don't throw my boxes away. I store frames. You want to keep your frames vertical. If you just pile them up, they're going to warp because of moisture in there. So a lot of this stuff has probably already been recycled or cut down. If you have a deep box like this and it gets rotted here or beat up bad, you cut it to a medium. Now, when you pick a box up, 99% of all beekeepers, they don't understand. These are hand holes for picking bee boxes up. They grab it like this and pick it up. Now, what's the weakest part of that hive? Right here. Now, you bust this off, what are you going to do with it? You can't cut it down. What you do is you cut the other rabbit off. Over here, convert it to a feeder. Part of all my saving, and saving. And I like the. Uh, what we got here? Something through a jack or something. Oh, I cut. I got a wood miser, and I had people buying wood and stuff. This stuff is cut for what they call the knights of the round table, the thirty-inch boards. I mean, I cut a lot of wood. You see some of that. Now here, we done this about eight years ago to show people how to save money. You see how this all marked up? This is a box. Over here in uh, the Commerce, there's a recycling place. These are pallets that they fold down. We buy, we try to teach students how to make money because they want to get in it, they don't have the money. You go over there and buy a pallet for 50 cents, you cut the metal off, you get two supers out of it. You can sell the supers for $15 each for a 50 cent investment. Buy <laughs> next. <laughs> like that. I like that. <laughs> well, I try to. You don't need to spend money. Grow slow. Grow what you can afford it. That's just another angle. Well, see, there's a lot of stuff that came from other bee yards. Uh, some of these are old style feeders. Stuff that gets brought up and has to be painted. I have students. I love for people, when new students come, I, I tell them, uh, you can pay for the course. I don't need the money. I need the labor. Work it out. But even if you pay me $500, you're going to lead whack. You're going to do some maintenance, because how do you know how to clean around the beehive? You're going to learn all these things. Here's a box of things. See that one? That was throw it away. Cut that down to there, make a medium. All right, the next one. Wax mill, she, bought, she liked that. She's making sheets there. And we were showing different ways to do. Wax mill is not necessary. If you're going to uh, keep them as organic as you can, Probably 50 hives, 100 hives. Depends on what extent you want to go. We recycle our own wax. We have nothing in it. That's down in my basement. This shiny thing is my, I, for my sawmill, I have tools to sharpen up band saws and stuff. Okay. Let me do something out came to it. I do in other words. I used to do this, you notice these are sliding glass doors, they're six foot long. You notice I run two. They don't keep up with it when you start cleaning out stuff, because I don't save it. When I pull my honey in October and November, I don't save my wax. I take the frame up with a knife and I cut it all out. Throw it in there, melt it down. New wax, they like better. And then I sterilize my frames. You need to sterilize your frames. This don't have most frames have four holes here. You only need one or two eggs in there from wax moth, and you buy a package or a new and you put that in, they hatch out and then you have problems. Okay, so what is this? 
That's a solar, solar wax solar. melter. Oh, okay. The problem with a solar, you can see there's wax here and different places you see the wax. Once you get two to three inches, the sun don't hit it high enough. I scraped it all out probably two or three times a year. In fact, we only haven't used them for two years. There's usually two to three inches of wax underneath it. And then we just put a, there's an opening right here. We keep a, a candle up underneath there. Uh, you can take the blackest cone and put it out there and it'll turn white. The sun will lead you. Mm -hmm. oh. Some of this stuff is so elementary to me, you know, when I have students in it, and this is how I do it. Now, people want to run it through screens, they want to run it through sheer curtains, paint filters, everything that someone actually told you you can do, I do this. I get almost 100% of the wax up. I take my high tool, and I pour the wax through here hot. I take my high tool. This one here was done in the second, second melt. And I take my high tool and I squeeze it out. And I roll it over and bump it a few times. And I squeeze it out. I'm going to get all the wax. A paint filter, you're going to get a bunch in there clogged up. You're wasting a lot. All your different methods. And I got them in the base of the show. And this year, that one's the first batch. There'll be a one inch block, uh, piece underneath there. This is fairly light. There's probably dirt and debris underneath it that scrapes off. And it, well, this is what here it is. And see, this one ain't been scraped. That's what those are. Those blocks in a two gallon bucket run six to about eight and a half pounds. We lightly scrape this and then we put it in our third batch. And then it comes out clean. There's our, that was made for me by a student and donated. That's, uh, and you don't need to have this if you want to melt wax. Go to Goodwill or Potter's Place and uh, get a roasting pan. Mm -hmm. See, this has got, this, this is an old picture, because we discontinued that. This only goes up to 165 degrees, and you need your wax at 178 and above. Mm -hmm. yeah, oh, no, no, right. Mm -hmm. But that, I'm not going to complain. Now, that roller right there, I bought that back in 80. That one there, I think, was around 80, 80, 89. That is 17 inches long. The newer ones that was on the other one, they're right at 13 inches. And this had inch and a half rollers on it. That thing sold for $650. I sold that, actually, I had it back in storage. I had sold that about four years ago. You know how much I sold it for? $1,400, you thought it was getting a good deal. But it made good sheets, uh, nothing really wrong with it, uh, plastic versus the metal. Uh, for the amount of money, people said, well, the metal's better. It really ain't the, that material is not as good as the new plastic ones. It's made out of gear material. It's a white, milky plastic. Uh, plastic, you don't take a metal brush and, and brush it, because you're going to wear the points off. Uh, th that's what I brought there. And this here, if you were to set up this here, uh, bleaching, you see how I'm bleaching the frames out to clean the holes. This it was painted in. You set your starter strip and you can either take a, a baster, put it in here, or take a small throwaway brush and dip it in the wax. One quick motion on each side, it stays in. You have to do everything uh, efficiently. Don, why do you have that? I don't know if you explained it already. What's the purpose of that tiny little box? This? No, just, just the whole thing. thing. I mean, it's like this is to make queens in. Oh. You put the queen cell in there and a cup of beans. One cup. Now, that's what I was saying outside. Your hive, as strong as it is, I set 50 of those up. You can make your split, don't get me wrong. It, you, probably 50% of the time you're going to get a, a good split, come back. But if it doesn't, you've lost enough bees. It's just a more refined way of doing it. <clears throat> don't take many bees. And uh, I don't have a separate area for. Uh, Drone congregational areas, because I, I didn't go to college, I, I just come from the old school. <laughs> and the reason I explain that to students that come there, where's your drone congregational? And I've been making claims there since 1988 or 89. Um, I try to explain to my, it's like the old lady that runs down my street, she got a bikini on, she's like 80 years old. <laughs> running down the street, all the guys kind of turn around and look at her, and watch what I'm doing. Granddaughter's about 17, and man, she's just a bouncing. Everybody, I can't get their attention. The same thing. 
A man can be in a bar blindfolded and he can smell, he can hear, something he kicks off. There's a woman just came in. <laughs> bees are the same thing. That's why bees fly out. Bees that may usually in your yard are not going to be as good as the ones fly out. Defeats the purpose of the congregation. And I make a lot of cleans. So I do a lot of things, like I said, against traditional ways. Right, let's do the next one. Sugar. That's the biggest secret I can show you. $150 is what we sell them. But what deal? That's a lot of money. At the very minimum, $3,500. On the high end, $4,800. That's what it converts into money. Don't about the honey. That's, Bob was gone. He retired. <laughs> uh, she's, she was having a ball that day there. She's going around looking. That's what it looks like in the barrel. Some of it has got lumps in it, and some of it's pretty uh, clean. Some guy in the face, but why enough if you shipped it? Shipped it. Yeah. Five hundred pounds. Not sugar. She only open feed. I'm not running five hives. We run two to five hundred hives. I'm mass feeding all over. And one thing most people don't understand is they have a few hives. And all of a sudden, they go, all oh, their friends, they're robbing. You know what you do to stop robbing? Close them up. Go over and open the lids off every one of them. All the ways go back to protect your house. <laughs> robbing stops within five to ten minutes. Psychology. I didn't think it worked until I did. <laughs> right? You see, and depending on how many hives you got, the buckets do about every third hole. These in these yards got every hole on them. And these act like little reservoirs. Mm -hmm. You see how many yellow jackets we got? Wasp. <laughs> A lot of people have that problem. Not to the next one. Old feeder. Uh, these here was designed originally with this is plywood. It replaced about the third generation of feeders. This was a solid piece of plywood. And we found out that it delaminated, we had to replace the whole thing, so we put this up here. And those got to be six inches there, and then if this delaminates, you pop that piece up and replace it. White latex in there, and this is probably about mid-80s, I can tell by the design. We put that extra three, uh, three eighths shim on top. See, before this model, we just run this up and there was barely any clearance here. And what happened is the bees propolized the, the, whack, uh, the screen to the lid. So if you give them that little extra clearance, they won't propolize. Mm -hmm. But they still will propolize a little bit from these edges here. Uh, queen candy. Uh, that's just regular paper, powder sugar. <clears throat> I try to explain to all the students, you can make the best queen that you can produce. If you can't get it across the county or across the states, you ain't accomplished nothing. So forget the marshmallow. Learn to make queen candy. Powder sugar, carol syrup. The old beekeepers, when I grew up, we didn't have to use uh, carol syrup. We used honey. And I think about 50, late 50s, early 60s, they done away with that. That's the way old beekeepers done stuff. They they saw they thought that by putting honey in there mixing, which was a better thing, it was worried about spreading pollen. That's why they went for this here. Mm -hmm. And you have to learn to mix your candy just right. This is a shaken screen. Uh, this here is for people that want to treat with powder sugar, which is not a treatment. It I will agree it will knock mites off, but for what little bit of mites it does knock off you attracted 100 times more in ants. It doesn't kill mites. That's why, see, I try to show a lot of things. Here, this back one, go back one. That one there, I did an organic class. I hope this lady going to come apart. I should come unglued. I ain't putting that in my hive. You put that on a paper towel, and it'll, it'll kill mites. It's a slow kill, it suffocates them. She said, I ain't putting it in my hive. And I lifted it, I just drank some. I said, it's just a lot of it. So it says, it don't hurt you. Don't hurt me, don't hurt bees. So there's a lot of ways to treat bees. Save for consumption or constipation. <laughs> <laughs> now, here's another way. If you've got a few hives, you know, power sure probably work. 
you can do, we can do our whole front yard. This is actually on the side of the yard because I got a trailer there. You can see the backyard.